All right, let me conclude the uh, MOSFET introduction with some comments on the bulk charge theory and on small transistors. So, in the past segments, we had calculated the inversion charge in the, in the semiconductor and uh, uh, written down expressions where uh, we had the, the width of the charge distribution uh, throughout the channel considered. And uh, we derived some uh, more lengthy expressions for this inversion charge. But then we imposed approximations like the square law uh, approximation or the uh, simplified bulk charge model where we had a, a factor of m here that helped uh, us scale and understand the device uh, devices better. You can carry forward these expressions uh, more explicitly. It's been done in the textbook as well. And you get more complex expressions and the way you would do that is you start with the similar expressions then add and integrate more complicated terms as shown here in blue that in, uh, in, encapsulate not just this component but the individual square root components. So uh, these additional components were sort of abstracted in the, in the, into this parameter m. Uh, you can carry that forward with a mobility model, do the integration along the channel and along the voltage just like what we had done before. Uh, but now you end up with a, a more lengthy expression that includes uh, the WT here uh, and a more complicated expressions for VD uh, as, as more complex expo uh, exponents. So this is being done in the textbook. You can look it up there. Um, these analytical expressions have been very helpful over the years until device scaling has uh, reached a point where additional effects really needed to be considered. And one of those effects uh, is a velocity overshoot. Um, so we talked about a saturation velocity. That is really not uh, quite true in ultra scale devices. There's something called a velocity overshoot where the carriers for a, uh, uh, a brief distance can uh, um, uh, travel significantly faster th uh, than uh, what the quote-unquote equilibrated or, or relaxed uh, representation of these carriers uh, in the semiconductor might show like. So this is a, a velocity overshoot that had been a significant research effort when I was in grad school when the classical transport uh, folks uh, were studying this um, around the same time. So uh, velocity is not just a simple function of mobility anymore. There's internal um, processes that you need to consider. And this is only true for bulk semiconductors, not at the top of the barrier. And a classical paper from the time uh, then is uh, by uh, Frank Laux and Fischetti, uh, who had uh, built a Monte Carlo simulator, um, Damocles, which is really the state-of-the-art um, uh, transport uh, uh, calculation where you treat electrons as kind of classical billiard balls and do statistical sampling rather than um, uh, a, uh, a drift diffusion approach. So it's a rather different approach to calculating carriers and uh, you need to do a lot of samples, etc. There's an art in it. They built the state-of-the-art tool at the time at IBM to study this. And the, the, this picture here on the left is, is quite dramatic, where you kind of get a pictorial view of the electrons flowing um, over the barrier here that exists in the, uh, from on, the, uh, on the source side. Okay, And then eventually there's relaxation uh, of the carriers here down uh, on the drain side. And they calculated and published that the velocity can uh, uh, rise significantly above the, the normal uh, uh, thermal velocity limit. And um, they've done this, and this is a, a significant contribution to the field uh, to, to identify this very clearly. and. Uh, that at those kind of scaling limits, uh, a consideration of just drift diffusion really is not enough. The interesting aspect today is that the channels have gotten so small that uh, really Lundstrom developed a model where 
you consider here just the top of the barrier and you argue that whatever electron makes it through the system uh, at the top of the barrier will make it down to the drain that the backscattering is small enough. And with that model you can explain uh, quite uh, well today's transistors even if they're nanoscaled, even if they're nanowires. The, the tricky piece is that my friend Max Fischetti would say is you need to figure out where is the top of the barrier. So for that you still need some detailed uh, device calculations. But the conceptual flow of how to manage the charge flow in these transistors can be figured out by this uh, Lundstrom top of the barrier model, which is very powerful compared to doing uh, extremely expensive comput uh, computations. So I'll talk a little bit about those models at the very end of the course. But the point here is, as you scale down the transistor devices, you explore really the limits of the classical theories and by about 2000 or so um, the, the modern transistor designs really had to consider more details than the traditional scaling uh, theories of electron transport. So let me uh, summarize for MOSFET uh, that the velocity saturation is an important consideration especially for shorter channels. Um, the bulk charge theory really explains well. The current uh, depends on the substrate doping. Um, uh, you can lump a lot of the uh, details into a, a parameter M that helps you understand the overall device uh, characteristics and how these uh, truly two-dimensional devices perform as a function of various gate biases. And uh, if you have velocity overshoot and uh, look at carriers at the nanoscale, uh, these theories don't help you to get a quantitative answer. You still get a qualitative feel, but at the nanometer scale you'll have to do more. And this is here the comment that if you look at the Lundstrom theory of a MOSFET, um, where it's a top of a barrier analysis, you can get a long way at the nano scale. So uh, that concludes the, uh, the MOSFET introduction, and in the next section we'll talk about some non-idealities and and the later section 32 will talk about um, what's out there in today's nanotransistors. Uh, so I thank you for your attention.